Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm Curl Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to be showing off the Rock Brush Pack for Particle Shop. So let's go ahead and use the Rock Brush Pack to add some interest to these rocks, because these are just boring and flat and white. So let's see what we can do. In the Particle Shop panel, let's choose Duplicate Active Layer, which would be this layer here, and we'll click on Launch Particle Shop. With Particle Shop open, we can click on the Rock Brush Pack, and here are all the different rock options down in the bottom right. Let's start with the Granite Preset. We want to make sure our brush tool is selected. I want to click on the toolbar on the left to open the color wheel. And I want to go ahead and click on the pin button to pin the color wheel so it stays fixed on the screen. Now let's pick a color. I'm going to choose kind of a bluish gray color like this. And I'm going to paint all around the area of the rock that I want to color in. Don't worry about over painting. Just make sure you cover the entire rock. Now if you want to resize your brush, you can hold down Control and Alt on your keyboard and you can drag your brush bigger or smaller. That'll give you some different results for the size of the particles that you're spitting out. As you can see here, with my brush bigger, I get bigger, chunkier results. If I make it smaller, then I get smaller, finer grains. If you use pen pressure on your tablet, you can control that size as well. If I use lighter pressure, I get finer grains. If I use heavier pressure, I get bigger, broader grains. I'm going to select another brush, which is Tonalite, and I'll select a lighter color, maybe kind of a yellowish cream color like this. I'm going to make my brush kind of small. And then I'm just going to tap with my pen or click with my mouse. I'm going to make my brush even smaller. I'm going to do that up here on the slider, and I'm just going to reduce it down to one. And essentially what we're doing here is just creating a nice rock texture, and we'll conform it to that rock form that's underneath it. So to do that, let's click on Save down here in the bottom right. We want to save only the brush strokes, and that puts our brush strokes on a new layer. I'm going to call that new layer Granite, and I'm going to set the composite method of that layer to Multiply. Next, we want to add a mask to that layer by clicking on the mask icon. Make sure black is selected, and we'll switch to our brush tool. The preset that we want is a soft edge brush like this, and we'll just use that to paint right along the edge. Don't worry about if you overpaint the rock, that's okay, but just clean up anything that's spilling off of the rock. Now I'm going to switch to white. I can do that by hitting X if my background color is already set to white. And X is really handy to switch black and white really quickly. This is very helpful for masking. So when we were painting with black in the mask, we concealed some of that effect, but if we want to bring it back, we can use white to very carefully paint back along that edge with a smaller brush. That way we get the entire rock covered. And again, it, if you paint over the edge, don't worry about it. You can select black again, and it can be a back and forth process until you get the exact mask that you want. Now, if you find that that effect is too strong, you can also go to the opacity, and you can reduce the opacity. Something like that looks pretty good for that rock. Let's change up some of the other rocks using another preset. So now that we have multiple layers in our composition, rather than duplicating the active layer, let's duplicate the visible layers below and merge with the active layer. So that's going to take all of these layers into account. And this time, let's select sandstone. I'm going to select a sandstone color, which would be kind of a peach color like this. And let's paint in some streaks that are following the curvature or the contour of our rock. We can make our brush smaller if we want finer streaks like this. But again, don't worry about painting off of your object here. Better to overpaint than underpaint. Let's change up our color a bit. Basically what we want are little stripes. Something like that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and click on Save. We'll save only the brush strokes. And just like we did last time, we'll change the composite method. We'll choose Multiply. Then we'll add a mask to that layer. We'll make sure black is selected. We'll select our brush tool. Now, if you want to edit that rock effect, you can continue to do so here in Photoshop. I'm going to click back on the layer, which takes me off of the mask. And now if I want to, I could use some of the regular Photoshop brushes to paint here on this layer as well. If I wanted to enhance little cracks and do things like that. I can also edit the colors by going to Image Adjustments and Hue Saturation. If it's not bright enough, I can increase the saturation. I can make it darker or I can make it lighter. And I can shift the hue if it's not the correct hue. Something like that looks pretty good. I'll click on OK. Now I have that nice sandstone effect. These rocks are beginning to look a lot more interesting. Let's go ahead and do this remaining big rock here. Let's try Porphyry. And let's pick an interesting color like this. Now if you're using a bigger brush, you're going to get bigger speckles. If you use a smaller brush, you're going to get smaller speckles. And again, you can use your pen pressure on your tablet to make those speckles bigger or smaller. If I press down harder, I get bigger speckles. If I press down lighter, I get smaller, finer speckles. 
So I can really quickly and intuitively go in here and just paint in this nice organic looking rock texture. I can also just tap with my brush to create little spots like this. Now we have this really interesting rock pattern. We could add some other colors to it as well. Let's go with that. We'll click on save. We'll save only the brush strokes. Again, we'll change the composite method. We'll set it to multiply. We'll add a mask. If masking with the airbrush isn't your thing, you can also use the lasso tools. For example, I could choose polygonal lasso. And then you can go to select inverse to invert the selection, switch to black, and then fill. We'll fill that with black. Control D to deselect. And that gave us a pretty good mask. We'll still have to clean it up a bit with the brush. Again, if we want to edit that rock, we can click back on the layer. We can go to image adjustments, hue saturation. If I want a more exotic rock color, I can shift the hue. That's kind of an interesting color that you wouldn't expect to see way up in the mountains. And reduce the saturation if I want to blend it in and make it a little more subtle. Let's go with something like that. And now we have three very interesting rocks. Now what if you want to create your own rocks that don't exist in the painting? Let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this rock. I'm going to switch to a hard edge brush. And let's select a rock color, something like this. We'll have this rock setting right up here. So once we've painted in our rock shape, let's go ahead and lock the transparent pixels by clicking on this icon here. I'm going to select a darker color, and I'm going to switch my brush to that soft edge airbrush, make my brush bigger. We can see that our light's coming from the top right in this painting. So on the bottom left, I'll just add a little bit of shading here. Let's make our color a bit brighter. And let's put in a bit of a highlight on the side here facing towards the light. We'll sample our sky color. We'll put a little bit of reflection on the back side. I'm going to pick a darker blue color. I might add in a bit more of a shadow here. And maybe just a few more highlights as well. So now we have our basic rock, but if we want it to look more interesting, we can go ahead and duplicate visible layers below and merge with active layer with that rock layer selected. Let's try carbonate this time. I'm going to use a smaller brush and an almost white color to paint over my stone. Let's click on save. We'll save only the brush strokes. I'll just name that layer carbonate. Let's change the composite method to overlay. Let's hold down control or command. We'll click on the layer icon for the rock layer. That'll put a selection around that layer. And on the carbonate layer, if we create a mask, that's going to automatically crop out the background. Now we can play with the opacity. We want to blend it in a bit more. Now we have that nice, sparkly, crystally looking rock. And again, if we wanted to continue to edit either of those layers, we could do that. We could click back on the rock layer. And if we wanted to use our brush to put in some brighter spots, we could do that just by painting. And we're painting underneath our carbonate texture here. Now, if you don't want your layers to be separate, you can merge your carbonate and your rock layers together by selecting both of them using Shift. Then you can hit Control or Command E to fuse them together into a single layer. And now if you wanted to, you could switch to your eraser and you could reshape your rock if you want it to be a little more pointy. Something like that looks more organic. I'll show you another way to create a rock that's more polygonal. Let's select the polygonal lasso tool. Let's have a rock up here that's more pointy like this. I'm going to create a new layer for that. Select a rock color. We'll fill with that. Control D to deselect. Let's use that polygonal lasso tool to go ahead and divide our rock. I'm going to select a dark blue color. I'll select my brush. The preset I want is a soft edge airbrush. And we want a fairly large brush. I'm going to lock my transparent pixels and I'll be able to paint only on that rock. So make a darker side like that, facing away from the light. The light's coming from the top right in this case. Control D, deselect. Back to that polygonal lasso. I'll have this little corner facing right towards the light, so that'll be the brightest. And this side here will be the darkest since it's facing away from the light the most. Control D to deselect. And now we have our more polygonal shaped rock. Let's go ahead and unlock the transparent pixels. Let's switch to our eraser. And then if you want, you can erase a little bit here so it's not so perfect. We'll just name this layer pointy. Let's go ahead and duplicate visible layers below and merge with the active layer. Let's try adding some cracks using basalt. We'll select kind of a dark gray color like this. We can tap to add some little fractured shapes here. That creates kind of an interesting texture on that rock. Let's go ahead and launch Particle Shop again using that same preset. 
And let's select pyroxenite. Use kind of a dark gray color like this. And we'll just paint over the whole thing. Some lighter and darker colors. And we'll add one more layer of texture to that. Let's use marble. And we'll use a very light color. We'll use a small brush just to draw in some little marbly patterns here. And I've gone ahead and just grouped and named my layers here so it's all nice and organized. And now if we do a before and after, you can see the effect that the rocks particle brushes had on this composition. It looks a lot more interesting now. And really quickly, I just want to show you the remaining brushes and how they work. Let's try coal. For coal, you want kind of a dark gray color like this. And you can make little chunks of coal. Gypsum gives you this nice streaky effect if you wanted some more crystally looking rock with a directional grain. Limburgite. I suppose was named after cheese or something. It gives you these nice geode looking effects if you tap with your pen or you click with your mouse. Let's try norite and you can see you get this nice rocky looking texture with all kinds of different colors in it. Pigmatite you can use to tap and create these little crystally effects. Pumice is very helpful for creating little bubbles and holes in your rock. You can tap and hold with your brush too to create little holes like that. Let's try cyanite. That gives you a nice rocky texture like this. And that should give you a pretty good idea of how to use the rock pack here in Particle Shop. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and make sure to subscribe to this channel for more Particle Shop tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.